Winspiration, the way to the essential. On UK Health Radio, Winspiration brings wisdom and information for an extraordinary future. Together, we can shape the world we want to live in. So let's get real and create the idea. Be extraordinary. Welcome to another episode of Winspiration Radio, and we bring wisdom and information for an extraordinary future. And today, wow, I feel so blessed having a special guest. It's Johan Ilgenfritz, and he is the founder, the great mastermind, and the director of this platform we are using here, the UK Health Radio. And Justin, before we started here recording, we had a little chat, and it was filled with wisdom insights. Um, so I think it would be a very interesting story, um, a session. And there's a story, say, uh, Ilgen Fritz's story is really extraordinary as well. If you just, uh, and most people maybe know, but maybe what sort of the key points in this transformation, what you did, um, leaving South Africa, being a, a famous uh, photographer, and then now a totally different purpose in life. I, yes, uh, Wolfgang, hello. Lovely to be here with you. Thank you so much for, for inviting me. Truly is a, is a pleasure. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Oh, you and uh, <laughs> okay. Maybe the listener should know we, we have a monthly uh, chat, uh, where we share just, uh, okay. Experiences, development, transformations. Uh, how we can grow in the extraordinary person, being a better person. And so that's why we uh, have it for, for a few years already in kind of deeper yeah. connection with this. And I'm so grateful that you invited me here to the platform. And I'm so blessed, I uh, uh, feel so interesting what you accomplished with your story um, that the doctor says, that's it, we can't do anything for you. And now it's totally the opposite. You do things for thousands of millions of listeners, for millions of patients, what the doctors uh, often didn't know or till today don't know and not really focusing on what's possible for the human being, just simply health-wise. Yeah. Yes, it, 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 has been quite a, it has been quite a journey, I have to admit. Um, um, I grew up in South Africa. Um, I studied photography there. I worked as a photographer as well. Um, I am of German descent. I am German. Uh, after South Africa, I left, uh, went to Germany, worked there as a photographer uh, for a long time um, in Germany and in London. The, the, the German um, Magazine World didn't like my style very much, but they liked it here. Mm -hmm. But I did work. I did a lot of commercials. in London for the listener that you know. I'm correct. Yes, sorry. Yes, I'm here in London, mm -hmm. um, where I now live. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in the beginning, um, a lot of the work in Germany, um, big companies there as well. I did, I, I photographed everything for Nivea, the beauty um, product Nivea for a month or five years, that kind of stuff. So, so that was it. And then um, just quickly in, in 2011, uh, as I said, there I was working as a as a photographer, fashion photographer, fashion beauty photographer. And um, in 2011, I, I was diagnosed with cancer. I actually had a heart attack before that um, on the tennis court, funnily mm -hmm. enough. Um, and about four or five months after the heart attack, the doctors couldn't quite work out why I wasn't feeling better, why I wasn't getting better. And that's when I was diagnosed with the cancer the first time. Mm -hmm. I did to uh, immediately, I, I have to say this because it's quite important. At that stage of my life, I had no idea of anything lifestyle. Is it? Um, okay. Medicine meant mainstream medicine for me that isn't mm -hmm. that point what it was it, mm -hmm. i had i had i had never heard of complementary um medicine or therapies or anything like that never heard. 
Well, not just never heard. heard. Never heard. Very interesting. Yes. Never really heard about it. It didn't interest me. I was, you know, yeah. it's I was doing my things. Be what your paradigms allow you to see. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's how I grew up. That's what I knew. That's what I did. And, um, and then the first, well, the first um, diagnosis, something really weird happened because it, the, the diagnosis put me into a total frenzy. It just been complete spin. I was useless. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I couldn't make decisions. All I did was was follow. I did radiotherapy. Mm-hmm. Two sets of radio, ending up doing two sets of radiotherapy. But even though I was in this in this weird state of mind, there was one feeling that that stayed with me the whole time, and that was I had no duties. Mm-hmm. Nobody had said to me. You know, do exercise or don't, yeah. or follow this nutritional plan or don't. Or my only duty was basically to be there for the treatment or the mm-hmm. remedial therapy, um, which I did. But as I said, that feeling of it's not helplessness, but that feeling of 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 having not not being part of my health. Yeah, future actually. I think that really stayed by me. It really did. They did. Um, and even though I was then given the all clear uh, mm-hmm. in October of 2011, after all the, the rest, I was given the all clear, cancer free. And even then, still, what is the land of feeling? Feeling also like you're just an object in the process? Oh, most definitely. That as well. Definitely. It was, uh, there was no, there was no, personal involvement mm-hmm. not from my side or from their side for that mm-hmm. matter you know as i said it's um it was just it was it was yeah you were just going through the mm-hmm. through the process finished and um quite, as it quite often happens you think to yourself okay been there done that no mm-hmm. and life continues as it always has unfortunately um and mine did continued the way I, I had been living up to then. And then in 2012, just mm-hmm. five months later, during my first post-cancer screenings, um, my oncologist said to me, yeah, and I'm really sorry, but I don't know what, what's happened. Uh, the cancer's back with a vengeance, and it has literally spread everywhere. Mm-hmm. And that's... That was, you would think I would have reacted the second time like I did the first time after being diagnosed, but that changed. Mm-hmm. It was, it's, I, can, I can still see myself sitting in my oncologist's office and her telling me the news and me thinking to myself, I can actually hear the voice in the, my mm-hmm. voice in the back of my head screaming mm-hmm. at me, it's mm-hmm. not going to happen, you're not going to die. Wow. I had a total different Mindset. I don't know I, how else to describe it. Ooh, which is looking back, we can defeat, call it mindset, or was something speaking through you? More yeah, but all I, that. I, I think I think the whole experience of before, what I said, I had no, uh, I had, you know, I had no duty. I had nothing mm. that I was supposed to do or not supposed to do. I was just, and that feeling of not being part of my health process. I think that sort of started growing mm-hmm. and becoming not just a little bush, but the tree. I really felt as if, as if, you know, and I always say nobody is going to fight for your life the way you are. Yes. The doctors have many of these that they treat all at the same time. Yeah. You know, they can't get, and they can't get personally involved. I, I get it. I understand it. You know, it's like, and to a point, of course, but um, so nobody is going to look after my health, fight for my health, fight for my life the way I am going to. Mm-hmm. And I think the second diagnosis came in that way. I was of that frame of mind. Let's see, mm-hmm. let's see more than that yeah. by then. You know, mm-hmm. it was. Um, I still had no idea about anything else in the other treatments or anything like that. 
you know. So, but it was that was that was that was intriguing. Even now, when I think back of it, I find it intriguing because it uh, within a space of just a little over a year, um, I had I had started on a path without even consciously realizing it. I had started on a path mm-hmm. that I'd never been before. Never mm-hmm. ever, not even close to it. You know, so there would not be my question of did you change something in between already, or just uh, were thinking, uh, now it's time to go back to make photos. I it's um, at that, um, yeah. The the work helped me as well. Work has always yeah. helped. Yeah, work, work, work has always been uh, whether it was the photography or. Well, my purpose, what I do now, I found my yeah. purpose to all this. So this yeah. is this is next level completely to the photography, you know. But um, work has always helped me. Um, but after the second diagnosis, uh, which I'll tell you a bit about now, um, it took about seven months before I found an alternative. I don't even want to use that word alternative because people always think alternatives to health. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't. I don't see it as alternative. Before I found um, another way. Let's just put it that way. Of you know, because after the second diagnosis, um, I said to myself, "Okay, so the first option didn't work. Now I'll go and find another or other options. Mm-hmm. They've got to be out there." Yes, you know? it's like change the way you look at things, and this is this dead end road. So now we need to look for a different road. Yeah. And it, it, I mean, in most cases, there is always another way of doing things. Yeah, always. And and that was basically that was my starting point. That's where I started at a clean slate, absolutely. You know, so one option had worked. Now find something else or other things. It doesn't have to be one thing. I'd even gone that far. You know, I always say to people when you when you stand in front of your closet, do you only have one fashion? Um, make in your office uh, in your cupboard yeah. you know do you only have suits from one designer and mm-hmm. they go no of course not and i go so why do we do it with our hair pills yes why do we not diversify why do we not look at all aspects of it like in life like we should yeah we are pro new when you yeah when you when you're looking at anything in business you can't just follow one way you've got to be diverse you've got to be able to move and and yes. redirect and change your ideas and very, very importantly from my point of view is you've got to be able to say to yourself, you were wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And then look at what, I, what happened. Yes. You know, and then not, not, not necessarily blame yourself. That's not what I'm no, saying. No, it's just, but have a look. Yep, what is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have a look and then find another way. Yeah, around it, over it, under it, doesn't matter how you do it, or in the opposite direction. That's a pattern, yeah. you know. So, so you made, I would say, different shifts. But one is for me is very interesting. Uh, for years, you produced photos, visibles, yeah, and now you created something. What is actually not directly photos? Maybe you have a magazine where are photos, mm. but what you really is is, is more. Transporting the wisdom uh, through the ear, not so much through the eyes. Yeah, it's actually very important, Wolfgang. I've always found radio or audio mm-hmm. a very direct medium. Mm-hmm. You know, when you when you're really listening to a podcast or to a radio station or to a show, when you're really listening, you are actually you can't do anything else. Like. You can eat while you're watching television and stuff mm-hmm. like this, you know. But you can you can't do anything else if you're really listening to the audio. And that and that was one of that was really one of the 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 main reasons I chose radio. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course because uh I didn't want FM radio either because FM radio was local. I wanted internet radio. I wanted to be able to speak to the whole world. And those mm-hmm. <laughs> that really? we started, we had we had two listeners. <laughs> I was the one, and my wife was the other one. Well, I think so. She's never admitted it, but I think so. if she was listening, uh, yeah. So um, it just you know it's and the other reason, which is quite funny actually, but 
it struck a chord with me as in Hamburg, the, you know, the radio station in Hamburg is called a radio Hamburg mm -hmm. and they have a jingle and the jingle of this, this is translated now, of course, but mm -hmm. um, radio get in Kopf. Mm -hmm. Radio gets in school and bleibt in Kopf. So radio goes in your ear and the message stays in your head. Mm -hmm. And that's resonated with me so much. Mm -hmm. The first time I heard that jingle. Mm -hmm. And then as when I when I sat down and thought, how can I everything I'd learned in in after the second diagnosis, how can I create a platform that I could share this with the world. That is one of the, one of the other reasons why I chose mm -hmm. the radio, the audio format. So, um, it's actually not, yeah, it's, it's actually, um, personal. And if you do radio properly, wow, it's a, it's such a powerful media. That person on the other side, listening to you can feel as if you are speaking only to them and that is that is quite something you don't get that in any other medium it's very interesting yes yesterday i had a recording well the session will come here also in one or two two weeks a, a lady who learned to speak from stage and said the way you speak decides if it goes really into uh, the yeah. other person's head and you can reach something and it's so interesting also just I never, never, never thought about it, which just comes up where you say this. I thought, where it comes from? Uh, we start watching and, and um, as a baby, but then now, in the womb of the mob, we start listening. Yeah. We have a training of listening and feeling, and yeah, later, months later, we start to see something and try to connect it. Yeah. So that is really an important point as well, well important. And uh, if you go in the Bible, what was in the beginning? The word, not the picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly do think that that through sound, of course, there's an emotional reaction to vision, to sight and stuff like yeah. that. But for me, the, the core emotion mm -hmm. is by sound. Yes, I hear it. Yes, and, and I saw once uh, um, a short movie, um, and they had I saw it two times. Mm -hmm. Totally different mu music, and I, I have the feeling I see a totally different film, totally different story. Even the pitch yeah. exactly the same. Yes, I I agree. I agree. Yeah. I can. I, I I haven't seen the film, but I can. You know. I can. I can literally imagine exactly that. It's like, yeah, some some scenes you can watch in a film, mm -hmm. and then you can watch it again with with the with the the volume turned down, mm -hmm. and that's got a total different feel to it, different different meaning almost. And then the talk uh, yesterday when we recorded yesterday, um, the lady also says, "Remember, remember, we're all frequency. Yeah, and sound is the frequency. So with the sound, we can transport the frequency, and that's why it goes in." And then you can make a connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yo, very, very, very interesting. So, so now up on to the whole world. Um, so, what was it? So, let's say the one or three key major changes or challenges or breakthroughs would bring all the radio to a different level. I, I assume simply like a lot of things in, in life is if you go to the Himalaya, you have base camps or everything. Success is not always as linear. So yeah. like, so what was the key points you needed to um, yeah, go through or create new ideas to make a kind of transformation to what where you started with the two listeners to where you're now in millions? Yeah. Um, yeah, quite a few things actually. Um, I think one of the, and I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a big announcer. I'm a big supporter of persistence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've got to, you've got to keep on keeping on. Yes. No matter what happens. Yes. Um, I think, I think that's, that's the overall thing. 
But to be able to keep on keeping on, mm-hmm. um, you've got to be very resilient, and you have got to, you've got to put yourself in the right place. Mm-hmm. You've got to, uh, um, you've got to be a positive person, which I am. I, 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 I'm speaking with you here almost eleven years after I was, I was diagnosed with twelve months to live. Mm-hmm. So I learned from that point of view, and I don't see it as you know. A lot of people say I'm, you know, uh, uh, we are we living on stolen time, or I'm the Walking mm-hmm. Dead. I don't see it like that. No, not mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got to you've got to be willing to make the change to make as many changes as you need to make. You've got to be very critical of yourself, but not in a negative way. You've got to see. The mistakes that you've made, you've got to see, and, and they're not necessarily mistakes. If you if you are building something new that nobody's done before, mm-hmm. I, I mean, there are lots of people have done radio, but nobody has done health radio mm-hmm. until UK Health Radio came. Mm-hmm. Um, there was there was no there was no other company that I could copy or follow or try. I mean, I looked at other radio stations, of course, all of them, as many as I could find, but it was still different. Mm-hmm. I'm a photographer, and my main, my first main challenge um, when I started UK Health Radio was the first question when I spoke to anybody about it. The mm-hmm. first question they asked me is, "Who are you?" Mm-hmm. And I would say, "I'm Johan Irgenfritz. I'm a fashion photographer. Or I used to be, and I could see the shutters coming down. Yeah, not a health professional. Mm-hmm. So that was my first. That was my first hurdle." Um, that I had to conquer basically is to, um, because I'm not a health professional, to still come across as as authentic. Mm-hmm. To come across, you don't belong to the authentic. Then just say, let's just a advocate. Yes. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But through being authentic, um, that helped. A lot of other little tricks also helped, like calling it UK Health Radio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It sounded very official, mm-hmm. almost sounded like it could be a governmental thing, mm-hmm. uh, which of course it isn't. But that's that's it's just you know little things that 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 all helped. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, um, as as I've mentioned before, I I I believe and I strive for perfection, mm-hmm. but I don't wait for it. Mm-hmm. I I have a. My motto is I get the thing up and running and then you improve on it and you try and perfect it. Yes. But you can't you can't create something in your head and expect it to be perfect. Well, not in this world. Well, they have seen mathematics or whatever, but not in my world. It really doesn't work like that. Yeah. You know? So um so I think I think yeah, and keep keep on keeping on. That's what you've got to do. You've got to be positive. It's um, you've got to take the good with the bad. You've got to evaluate both. Yes, because the the, the good can be as detrimental to you yes. as the bad can be. Yes, exactly. Uh, the little just kind of uh, labeling what we do is as bad or good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and. There's an ego factor in there as well that you've got to be yes. careful. You know, it's like um, if it follows my in in la- aligned with my plan, then it's good. If it's not aligned with my plan, it's bad. Then it's bad. Yeah, <laughs> and it isn't always necessary. No, no. no. So, so yeah, you've got to you've got to be very um, open minded. Evaluation, I think, is the second one probably. Uh, um, and in German, we often say that don't label anything, which is, it is what it is, says love. Yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. The facts, and is it uh, helpful or not helpful for what, where I want to go or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that it, it, this is this is the weird thing, but it, it had such an effect on me. There's an English saying that says, practice makes perfect. Yeah. And my whole life, I believed in practice makes perfect. Mm-hmm. Until I realized it's the biggest lot of rubbish on earth. Mm-hmm. Practice makes permanent. Yeah. It doesn't make perfect. No. It can be doing it like a trap. Yeah. yeah. If 
I'm a big tennis guy. You know that. I'm an yeah. avid tennis player. Love it. I'm a tennis player. But I love, but I love, I love the game. I love tennis. and running. Yes, <laughs> and running. Yeah. yeah. But um, tennis. If you play a forearm incorrectly, you can practice it until you're blue in the face. It's not going to work. You know yeah. What I mean. So, and that was one of the in amongst quite a few other ones. I've mentioned the other one um, a little while before. If you change the way you look at things. The, the things you look at change. That mm -hmm. was the one thing that that really played a, a very big effect. There's another one, if I may, mm -hmm. um, that you taught me, <laughs> <laughs> and that is um, if you are willing to do the transformation, mm -hmm. you do not need the reincarnation. Mm -hmm. I love that, and it's, this has got nothing to do with a. a, a a religion thing or anything like that. If it's just if you're willing to do the work, you see? the outcome will be different. Yes. For me, that's what that means. And you, you, you said that to me about a year ago, and it never left my mind. It's um, it's a very big part of of my daily thought. Actually, mm -hmm. and I fall back onto that so often, and I look at the situation I'm in, and I think about it. Do you need to do any transformation here? You know, is the world wrong or are you wrong? Yeah. You know, there's another saying, if the world is always wrong, maybe the world isn't always wrong. Yeah. So you got to be, you know, um, yeah. So that's, I think that's, um, I think that's basically what you've got to do. And you've got to work hard. You've got to. Yes. If you have to work hard, what your senator comes up with the tennis player and, and training, whatever, forehand yeah. and or whatever. Even if you the best have the best forehand in planet Earth, it doesn't say that you win the game. No. Yeah. Absolutely. So maybe you're just so stubborn in this, but there's someone else playing with you. <laughs> yeah. And if you can like, cope with that. Yeah. Yes. And I think probably the last one that I that I consciously do literally on a daily basis is I, I get uh, I get an enormous amount of information sent to me by email through the websites mm -hmm. and through my personal emails and everything else. And I I look at I look at it and I really I I I just try and keep an open mind on 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 everything, you know, so that you can that it's it's just Challenge your challenge your own ideas as well. Challenge your own beliefs all yes. the time. Look at something, yes. and and look at it in a in a positive way. Now, which it is. There's a lot of doom and gloom out there, but there's a lot of really really good things happening out there as well. Yeah, and then uh, with your radio and all the doctors, I will just have a next question. Then we will shortly make a little break, and then afterwards, we need to understand all. If we are, and that is what I feel and know about you, is you are the pursuit of truths. And if you're in the pursuit of truths, you always need to question what is. Because we can't prove this is true. Yeah, no theory you can prove that is right, wrong, the best. No, you can only prove if it's wrong. So we need in a society get a totally different uh, feeling about or questioning everything because, hey, yeah. That's the only way we can can do better. You are now you started with the idea. I created a, I created a health radio, and you wanted to have someone who was presenting different topics. How do you choose the topics or the presenters um, to really say from where you're coming to say this will really help people? Um, actually, two two ways. Um, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say that the most trodden path is uh, from some thing, information I receive from our listeners. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'm, I, I, I ask you cannot something. Or if they send you something or they ask you something. They, they ask for information about yes, okay. whatever, whether okay. it's Crohn's disease or, yeah. or hay fever or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what I do at UK Health Radio, my job at UK Health Radio is content. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Yes. And as I mentioned before, I get hundreds of emails each day. Mm -hmm. I, I've, um, I have somebody that helps me with it, but we, 
I look at the, the, the ones that are really important and that information is what I take. And I make a list of, of what topics mm -hmm. of what health topics or health information our listeners ask for the most. In other words, that means two things. Either they haven't found it on our website. It's there, but they haven't found it. So that's a point for me to look at yeah. what the website isn't functioning properly. And on the other side is if they haven't found it and it's not there, then I must, then I go and I look for a health professional in that area. Um, we train them because most of our, our presenters aren't, aren't radio presenters, the health professionals, you know, for example. Um, and we train them and we put them on the radio for, mm -hmm. because it's, it's not about the DJ and how good he is. It's about what the man and his interviewees are saying. Yeah. Women are saying, for example. So that's, that's how I go about finding, um, finding what subjects on the one hand, on the other hand is, is through this amazing job that I have, and I call it a job, just it's mm -hmm. not a job, it's, it's a calling, but through this, um, I meet the most incredible people, Wolfgang, you have no idea the people I have met in the last 10 years. And some of them, I just know instinctively that they've got to be on the radio. So um, that's that's how I do it. That's actually um, how I do it. Wow. What was your up? Joy over business or something like this? So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Job is uh, in the city. Job, I, I know the the one thing about job is just the bombs broke. Yeah, just over growth, just a bit that they can, yeah, that they have to to eat and, and not enough to be free, that they can go back, need to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like we yeah. in Europe said, uh, what was it, the king and the bishop uh, came together. You keep them poor, I uh, keep them stupid. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, and <clears throat> here comes uh, Johan and says, okay, at least in this area. I will help them that they don't need to rely on. And I, I can personally answer my story is it was my ignorance, my paradigms that I also just simply listened and trusted doctors and they created problems. Yeah, because it was uh, their mindset or, um, yeah, they were just happy. And so as a lawyer also, I was happy to be in a lawyer, not every day. What do I need to learn you today? It was not in my plan really so if you meet someone the lawyer or the doctor that was 20 years in the business and just has this clinic running people are coming da, 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 you can be quite sure that you get treatments which are obsolete already is not the best word it is in a moment yeah so it's really um, a challenge in life in general to always challenge like you said my ego my belief and question myself And hopefully one day we have this more in school. Um, okay. Train, train for. Do you have the right answer? Hmm? Yeah, not um, really help people. Um, or, uh, how to uh, get higher grades because they have the better question. Hmm. Yeah, and I think I think awareness as well. I, awareness is such a It's such a trodden word as well these days. I, I actually don't even like using it anymore, but the, the, there are so many opportunities that come your way. You've just got to be open okay. to yes. receiving them. Let's use the word open and not aware because yes. you've just got to be open to receiving it. It's because it's there. Yeah. And I'm and I'm sure it's always been there, but it's just, yes. Yes. I, yes. Was, I was just not open enough. Exactly. Even not even to recognize them, to even know they, that they exist. And yes. And I think my story is that, I, okay, law office, tax accounting, big office in Hamburg, five floors, wow, employees, yeah. wow, 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 wow. That's the real life. And when I really I couldn't stand it anymore, I said, I need to get out of this. And then afterwards, I did network marketing. And, <clears throat> and then in network marketing, I found out that a lot of those successful people came for whatever crisis. Mm -hmm. So that's once a successful person says, I can't join this group, 
because I'm successful already. Yeah. I, I, have you only those who are not successful, who are miserable or whatever? And in the end, mainly yes, because otherwise they wouldn't be open. Yeah. Otherwise they wouldn't be open. And this is so, oh, the book from Gay Shi, uh, also the, the happy people, they all, most of them had a big crisis. That, like, that, like you and me, which says, wow, we need to rethink, question the way we live. And is it purposeful? Is it really, are my cells opening up? Yeah. And that is what we also say, what well, is the quality of your question besides the quality of your life? Yeah. 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 I, 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 I definitely believe that um, it does. I mean, some people are, are lucky enough um, to realize it themselves. But in my case, it was definitely um, trauma almost, if I could call it that, because it was quite traumatic. The whole, the whole episode, the whole thing was really traumatic for me. It mm -hmm. really was, you know. So yeah. it definitely was trauma that that shook me awake, basically. So now you're, in, a lot of people can't really imagine that you started with nothing or with two listeners. Uh, now it's already a big success. It is not just a UK success. It's not just a Europe success. You have listeners in, in the US. You have listeners in Asia. And uh, you're going simply said, more global than ever. One country after another comes, so the listeners from those countries coming to you. So what is the real vision now? Uh, my, my vision is actually two parts. And I do feel that um, the first part, probably not complete yet, but almost, um, I always say to myself, it's, it's actually part of, it's part of one of the mantras that I use is, um, I am the person putting UK host radio into every single dwelling on the planet. That's the first part. That's what I, that's what I want to do. And I don't mean, um, penthouse apartments or your family homes. I mean, dwelling to mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where dwelling that's what i want um, mm -hmm. and the second part of it is getting every person in every dwelling to listen mm -hmm. so that's basically that's always been um the outline of of what i want to do and yes yeah. and so on so we started with the radio uh, we now have 41 shows 40 i think 49 presenters because a lot of the shows have more than one presenter Mm -hmm. or they do it together or they al alternate as um, as they mm -hmm. prefer, actually. Uh, we got on the radio itself, we've got 1.3 million listeners now. Um, uh, as you know, we started the podcast. Um, you can on radio is now, all 41 shows is now on uh, the podcast, on 50 podcast platforms around the world. So... Um, Possible listenership there is about 800 million people. And um, of course, we're not there yet. We're, it's, we're right at the beginning of this um, part, but that's um, that's what I'm aim, that's what I aim for. That's just so we've just done our first um, our first advertising campaign in the UK and uh, in the US. And yes, we have we have listeners in 54 countries at the moment. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Unbelievable, actually, some countries where where you really think, why? And some of them are only 20, 20 in some countries, there are only 10 or 20 listeners, but they're mm -hmm. still listening there. And it's great. It's a start. And it's an English school. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And we, yeah, as, as you mentioned. So, and yeah, really um, exciting. There is, there's, an, there's a third section to this, which I'm right in the beginning of. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail. In it as well, but it's really excited me. It really has. Um, um, it, it, yeah, should in the next three or four, say three or four months, we should know whether that's going to happen. It won't only be audio. I can say that. <laughs> so um, it will probably be visual. Will be visual as well. But it's just a, it's a continuation. I'm, I've got to 
I've got to try and put, you know, UK Health Shady, this is really important to me. Um, we don't um, distinguish between health groups, mainstream health or natural health, or integrative health. UK Health Radio is good quality information mm -hmm. on health, mm -hmm. no matter where it comes from. I mean, literally, sometimes more than half of what's airing on UK Health Radio, I personally don't agree with. Mm -hmm. But who am I to not air it because I don't agree with it? Yeah, yeah. You know, so, for, so it's really important for me, especially the, um, in this day and age where freedom of speech is a tricky thing these days. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm very thin ice here, but freedom of speech isn't the way freedom of speech was when I was a young man. It's changed. So, um, I want to, I want to, I want to have as many platforms as possible where people can access us as easy as possible. So that's basically right. Really also. And trust us. I, absolutely. Even if it's different yeah. opinion and nobody gives us a guarantee that it works, but it can trust here are not people working on fake news. Or, yeah. Correct. That is I, that, absolutely. Trust is, um, mm -hmm. is trust and integrity. I think, think they go hand in hand. You can't have the one without the other. Um, I think that is just what we, not only me, I mean yourself and all the other 40 presenters all work really hard to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. through, through, and you mustn't forget, you know that the press here in the UK have, have called me the curator of health expertise. And that's exactly what I am. I curate mm -hmm. health expertise yeah. through the world. Yeah, and that is—it's uh, true. It's honest. It's real information. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do with whether I, D, you, or anybody else likes it or not. How do you that's basically compare now? Would you say I'm offering health expertise with the you know, uh, artificial intelligence, chat GTB, and so that you give a question in and you get an answer? Mm -hmm. How how you see this is just the truck thing, the difference, or um, is it not, not easier just going in the artificial intelligence and asking a question and then? Yeah, it's also, it's a tricky thing. Even here, I always look at the positive side of it. Mm -hmm. And AI, I think, has its place. Mm -hmm. Um Whether it has its place in health, I'm not so sure. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because there's always a human factor in this. Mm -hmm. There's always a yeah, human yeah. factor. And the so, um, yeah, it's um, the truth is always the issue, I think, um, with AI. And I said, I honestly think I, I'm not doom and gloom about AI at all, actually. I think in a lot of areas and, and, If used properly, I think it could help us. It could help us take away time so that we can concentrate perhaps on better things, like more useful things that we do. Uh, AI is in better already in diagnosis and in a human doctor, even someone who wants to learn new stuff. But it's hard to yeah. keep up with all what is it. So with all your experience, uh, different uh, professions, and now especially with uh, all the experience in UK Health Radio from, uh, from the technical point and also with the content of all the different health topics. And uh, I'm, I'm the, the so-called crazy guy with extraordinary future. So what is an extraordinary future? And uh, simply said, we could create something what we never really believed before, could see before, uh, simply would maybe say we are capable of creating paradise on earth. So with all your experience, um, not using UK Health Radio only, let's say the sickness channel, uh, so it's also maybe the tuning channel, um, how optimized because we have all no clue how healthy, how fit we really could be. Nobody tried it really yet in the, in the 
consequence uh, school or whatever I said. So what do you see or recommend from all what you learned? What can we as normal humans do to really, yeah, uh, take better care of us and tune us or live more up to the potential what we might ignore so far? Definitely. Um, prevention, I'll, I'll just start with one thing. Prevention is always better than cure. Mm -hmm. And we can only do that if we become part of our health process, mm -hmm. be involved in other words, and be active mm -hmm. physically and mentally. Probably mentally is even more important than, than physically because it's, you've got to be open for, you've got to be open to new things. Yes. As I mentioned, the cupboard, you don't only have one design in your cupboard, you mm -hmm. have more, you wear what suits you. Um, and so, unique, so nobody else can do it for absolutely. me. Absolutely. That is, uh, and and of what you've just mentioned, basically, is is personal medicine. Not one person on this mm -hmm. planet yeah. is the same. And we don't react the same on things. Yeah. So you've just got to do a lot of work yourself. Um, yeah. The people out there that can drink lemon juice every morning. My wife drinks lemon juice in hot water every morning. Mm -hmm. I can't. I mm -hmm. drink it for three days in a row. I can't get out of bed. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It's, that's mm -hmm. what I mean. But I, you can't just accept everything. You've got to try. You've got to do it. You've got to be interested in it. So mm -hmm. personal, personal. And yeah, I think the main thing is, is just you've got to become part of the process of your health. Keeping yeah. it. Yeah. Very important. I know. Um, we just have the, the picture in mind of Formula One races, um, and every driver has a different seat or and every different different drink. Yeah, so that what what he is losing when he has the stress uh, minerals and what he needs to fill up, uh, and it's all by testing and they're all monitoring all the time. And uh, like you said, we easily eat everything. We go in a supermarket. What is a special offer of the day. <laughs> and we never would do it with the car. Well, like I said, in German. Yeah. yeah, we're so crazy how we treat us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's ridiculous, actually. I mean, it's um, what we eat and what we think. Those two things, What for me, that's what saved my life, mm -hmm. those two things. Mm -hmm. What I ate, because you... And it, if you want to be scientific about it, what I did is very scientific. A person mm -hmm. by the name of of, um, of Dr. Warburg, who was a German biochemist, mm -hmm. won a Nobel Prize for this information in 1932, 31, sorry, 1931. Mm -hmm. He won a Nobel Prize for it. And that is cancer cannot survive in an oxygenated alkaline cellular environment. Mm -hmm. So you can't you can't change the pH of your blood. Not possible. Your body regulates that. Yes. But you can change the pH in your cell structure. Yeah. And that's what I did. I cured my cancer. And I can say that because I'm not selling anything with it. I actually cured my cancer. It took me two and a half years, not a quick fix either, um, through starving the cancer to death, mm -hmm. taking their food away. Mm -hmm. So I became an alkaline vegan over a quite a big and alkaline vegan up for about eight years. But yeah, that's, um, and of course, you are what you think. Managing stress, um, managing that internal language in your head mm -hmm. is, um, is so important. I mean, we all know stress can acidify your body <laughs> astronomically. We all know that. You know? So you've got to think into it. You've got to think about it. What, what stress worries you? In my case, it was time pressure. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? I lengthened my day. It's it's doable. You can. You must just think into it and adapt it so that it fits you. None of us can get away from stress anymore. Not possible. Um, if you if you have if you're a grown up, you have stress, but you've got to learn to handle it, to deal with whatever makes you ill or not well, mm -hmm. and change it. And we're coming back to the judging. Yeah. So the less we judge. Let's stress, okay, there is some things to do and everything, but uh, 
and and know also with uh, the purpose. If it's aligned with the purpose, it's so much easier to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. as I said, stress and the oil stress and so on. Just uh, it's a big difference, and it brings a huge amount of fulfillment if you live your purpose, and the whole system gets energized and so much more and more healed. Um, because all processes uh, are going better. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's your whole outlook on life. Yeah. Everything is different. Oh, mm -hmm. Just what you said also with uh, the cancer is it changing your, your diet system. One part is that the bad stuff, okay, <laughs> stuff to death. But on the other end, everything else transporting the nutrition is better. If you're in the right pH level, water is better and it's better. Absorption is better, everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday at another interview also with uh, someone who was really uh, in the topic of, of the water and in his, uh, wouldn't say healing, but he sees with his patients, was, what a tremendous difference just by changing in the water. Yeah. 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 And I'm, um, that's a, it's a, it's actually another avenue that I'm looking into is I'm in the information industry at the moment. That's what I do. Yeah. Um, but there's some amazing products out there, and I have, I have managed. I'm fortunate enough to be part of a company. It's uh, that is uh, it's just starting out. The the uh, the, the actual product um, has been it's ten years in the development already, but. Um, that's that's another area that is also be the information, but it's also um, something that you can use that you can you know you know so yeah very important. Who is the topic for another uh, <laughs> session? Uh, yeah, because the paradox is there may be start something about this show, uh, this episode at least is uh, ending today. Um, thank you, Jor, and it was a pleasure to experience you again uh, with all your wisdom. And uh, again, that not me only, we are blessed that you would do this and help us all uh, be physically in the possibility of having an extraordinary life and create whatever we want. Thank you, Johan, and this was another episode of Winspiration Radio and uh, Trust, the best is yet to come. This was another episode of Winspiration Wisdom and Information to support you getting out of illusions, false identifications, limiting beliefs. We all have the power and potential to be more, do more, have more, give more. Reality is what is possible in the universe and the best is yet to come. If you want to dive deeper into possibilities of creating the extraordinary future, go to inspiration.global or to wolfgangsonnenburg.com. More information and some free downloads like the email program Dream Goals Reality or a copy of the book The Best is Yet to Come can be found on the UK Health Radio website under the Listen on Demand and Presenters section. Join us again next week on The Winspiration Show for more wisdom and information to create your extraordinary future.